We're back with former Vice President Joe Biden. His new book is Promise Me, Dad, A Year of Hope, Hardship, and Purpose. So, Mr. Vice President, when I read this book, what, what's at the heart of it? What's at the center of this book? The center of it is two things. One, that I wanted people to know what an incredible young man my son was. And I also wanted people to, who, people, a lot of people have gone through what I've gone through without any of the help I've had. And I didn't want it to be about grief alone. I wanted to let them know there, that you can find, you can find hope and purpose. And, uh, and I really mean that. You know, Immanuel Kant's phrase that there's three things to happiness, uh, something to do, someone to love, and something to look forward to. It's all about trying to take what Bo, what I think, my family thinks, Bo would be doing where he's still here, and doing it. And it gives you, it gives you purpose. It gives you a sense of, uh, him still, you know, being with you. There's, but you tell a very beautiful story in the book, uh, Mr. Vice President, about the death, the murder of police officers in New York City, and you were talking to the widow of one of the police officers, and you said, take a calendar, and on that day of the death, mark what? Tell the story. Well, when I lost my wife and daughter, when they were killed right after I got elected, a tractor trailer hit them, and... People would come up and say, I know how you feel. And after a while, you feel like saying, it's awful. You know they mean well. You feel like saying, you don't have any idea. I got a call from Governor Hughes of New Jersey, who I never met. He was 40 years my senior. He told me he knew what, what I felt. And he said, I know what you're thinking. And then he told me how his wife died suddenly when he was going home to lunch. He had an aneurysm and so on. And he said, I'll give you a piece of advice. He said, every day, and he said, the down days will be just as down as the moment you heard the news. But and you'll think, I'm never going to get better. He said, but here's what I want you to do. Every night you go to bed, mark in a calendar from 1 to 10 what kind of day you had. 1, the day you heard the news. 10, the day, the best day of your life. You won't have any 10s. But he said, don't look at it for six months and then put it in a graph. And he said, you'll see the down days are further and further and further apart. Now, how does and that help? What, how did that help? It you? helps because it makes you realize there is, I am actually making progress. Mm -hmm. I am able to do something. Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed the number of people in this book tour who come to me and say, you know, I do what you said. Yeah. I keep a calendar. I keep a calendar. You know, Mr. Vice President, and then that family of the NYPD officer who had been assassinated, you gave them your personal cell phone. Well, sure. I mean, look, when you've been, when, when you've been the recipient of so much generosity and empathy, and uh, it's so easy, and it makes you, it gives you a little purpose to give back to mm -hmm. people. And so I, I went out to see, I, you, you may remember it was in the middle of that, the potential riots because the African-American had been killed on the street by the police officers and then he was acquitted and they were acquitted. And I was asked to come when those two police officers were assassinated. And I guess it was 25,000 cops showed up, I can't mm -hmm. remember, yeah. but a lot of cops. Because I have a great relationship with the cops and an overwhelmingly positive relationship with the African-American community. So they asked me to come and speak. But I then went out to Brooklyn to Mr. Lou's house. His son had died. he just got married. They lived in the house with the parents. And they were, didn't have the funeral because they were waiting for the Chinese relatives to come for the funeral. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, and Mr. Lou was a diminutive man. And he just hugged me. And he stayed under my arm. He just kept holding on to me. And, and uh, when he walked out in the cold with me, he just... And here I was, eight months later, my son died. And f there was eight hours of people in line, literally eight hours, to come view my son's casket. And I'm standing, I look up, and I see uh, 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 Mr. Lou standing there. Yeah. And all he did was walk up and just hugged me. Hugged you. And he was giving me comfort. It's, and he didn't really even speak English. That's no, what was he so spoke Cantonese, and he, but, he, 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 but I, he didn't have to speak. You, you, there are no words at that time, but you know, as proud as you are of Bo, he was just as proud of you. You write in the book how Bo would say to you, Dad, be all right, be all right. Are you all right as you sit I'm with a, us no, today? No, no, I'm, 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 I'm it, good, I'm good. Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody spoke, speaks so glowingly of Bo. You say you're sitting down across from a kid who's old, a young boy. What's the one thing he needs to know to grow up and be? Well, I think like the one son? thing you need to know is you have to, uh, you have to be just straightforward and honest. You have to. It, 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 it's the building block for everything that happens in your life. And I, I mean, it really, truly is. It's the building block for everything. And and my dad had an expression. He say. Everyone, and he meant it, every single person entitled to be treated with dignity, no matter what. 
my father would never walk by a shoe shine guy or a CEO without saying, I, I give you, without, seriously. Mm -hmm. And I point out, you know, you were asking me, Gail, about the book mm -hmm. where we're on Nantucket Island, the Secret Service, I'm in one car. We had people who were volunteering to be, be, be with us, a guy driving us named Ethan. My son and my grandson are in the car. The Secret Service goes left, they go straight. And, and my grandson, who's then five years oh, old, boy. says, driver, driver. And my son said, pull over the car. And he opened the door, got in the back, he said, Hunter, nobody is addressed by what they do. This is Ethan. Nobody's a driver, honey. Do you understand me? Nobody. Mm -hmm. That's the way we were raised. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing, people respond also when you treat them with dignity. When you, when you look at this administration, and how it's being run on a daily basis. What's, what's your biggest concern? I, my biggest concern is foreign policy. Uh, my biggest concern is two pieces of that. I think the president, understandably, because of his background, is devoid of any depth of knowledge in foreign policy, but he seems not to be a student of the detail. And then you have a guy who's really a bright guy, but he is de who's the Secretary of State, but they're decimating the State Department. Can you imagine? We're in a situation in East Asia, and we don't have a Secretary of State for East Asia. Can you imagine? I mean, and as a friend of mine who was the number two guy at the State Department said, you can go up in the seventh floor and holler and hear an echo in the State Department. I mean, this is the time to engage and to have more diplomacy. So the Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, made some news yesterday. He said that with a, the U.S. should negotiate with North Korea without preconditions. Yes. Do you think that's right? Yes. I think you have to talk. Mm -hmm. You have to talk. Look, here's the deal. It's a difficult... The, there are two things the President and I talked to the Trump administration about in the interregnum period. One was health care and the other was Korea. They're one, an intractable problem. Every president's had not had the answer yet. But the one thing everybody knows, you have to have China, Japan, and South Korea on the same page. And here the president, a couple months ago, is referring to the president of South Korea as an appeaser and taking on the... I, I just, it just... You share the view that North Korea in no way should ever get access to any kind of nuclear weapon, or is containment... Uh, as some people have talked about, a possibility as a difference. Well, I think based on the conduct of this administration, the next president could be left with a policy of containment. Mm. The reality is, I think, the likelihood of being able to put together this Rubik's Cube, which is difficult to do, but possible, is not likely in this administration. And so I think the end result's going to be a policy of containment. And, uh, and to try to move from there, the next president, I predict, will inherit that circumstance. Mm -hmm. But the real worry now is their submarine capability mm -hmm. and the whether North they Koreans. get that, the North Koreans, mm -hmm. whether or not they get the capability to have a sea-launched, a submarine-launched uh, um, missile. Um, and so we need to double down on what we're doing with China and what we're doing with the rest of the world to even tighten the sanctions further. But I think Nikki Haley has done a good job at the UN. Um, I think that the, unfortunately, the Secretary of State constantly gets undercut by the president. He goes off to negotiate something. He said, well, that's not, 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 nothing gonna happen there. I mean, what a hell of a way to run a department. You said something interesting when you said uh, you, haven't, you haven't ruled it out, but you're certainly not thinking about running for president. But you said, I'd like to see who's up and coming, who's going to be out there. Do I you think see anyone out of, there? I think there's a you... lot of talented people out there. And, uh, but I think the Do next... Do you care to name any names about Well, I'm afraid I'll leave people out, yeah. but, you know, you, you okay. just had Christian Gillibrand on here. You had the, the senator from New Jersey. There's a, there's a whole lot of really... We're really talented people, but we need somebody who's going to be really up to speed and be totally confident in the area of foreign policy, mm -hmm. and someone who is going to be, and I think there are a number able to do this, or be able to reach out across the aisle. Yeah. This, you, you can't run this democracy without consensus. Right. You can't do it. It's not possible. Well, Mr. Vice President, Joe Biden, thank you so much for joining us and for this conversation. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for talking about my boy. I know, I know. Your book, Promise Me, Dad, it's on sale now. It's a terrific book. Thank you.